Should you collect math books? Is it worth it? Well, the reason that I collect math books is probably not the reason that you're going to collect math books. Let me just briefly tell you why I collect, and then we'll talk about why I think that maybe, maybe you should collect. So I collect because I'm a collector. I have collected things my entire life. When I was 10 years old, I sold my coin collection to try to buy a Nintendo. So think about that, 10 years old, and I'm selling my entire coin collection. So when did I even start collecting coins, right? You might wonder, well, were you rich? You know, what 10-year-old collects coins? I wasn't rich. I remember I sold my collection and I still couldn't buy a Nintendo. I had to wait several years before I got the Nintendo. I got an Atari instead, which was which is okay, but you know, Nintendo was really the cool thing back then. And I eventually got the Nintendo several years late, but you know, I didn't have a lot of games or anything. It took a long time to get the Nintendo. A long time. So I've always been a, a low dollar collector. Comic books, coins, vintage weights, Magic the Gathering cards, books. I'm probably forgetting some, but I collect a lot of things. Old Nintendo cartridges, I mean, everything, you name it, I collect it. But I'm a low dollar collector. I've always collected things that are inexpensive. And math books are cheap. You can get old math books cheap on the internet. People always ask where I get them. Most of them are from Amazon. You can get used copies on Amazon. A lot of times when I make a video, I'll say, check the link in the description. When you check that link, just look for used copies. Or click the link, see if there's used copies, and if they're sold out, just type it into Amazon. And sometimes you can find older editions as well. Look for those used copies. You can get them for a few dollars, you know? Math books are special though. So let's talk about why you should collect. Math books aren't like coins. Math books aren't like Magic the Gathering cards. Math books are collectibles that you can use to learn. You can take a book like this, Advanced Calculus, Introduction to Analysis by Fuchs, and use it to learn knowledge. Old books, new knowledge. Right? Old books, new knowledge. And you can have it for the rest of your life. Some people will say, well, you shouldn't collect math books if you're not going to read them. And that's a valid argument, but a lot of times people collect things and they don't even look at them, right? I collect Magic the Gathering cards. They're in a box somewhere. I sold most of my good ones, but I have a couple decent ones left from the Alpha series, some commons, nothing crazy. And I don't look at them. But math books, you can, right? You can say, hey, today I'm going to pick up this book by Fuchs and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read one page. So you've taken an old book and you've got some new knowledge. Maybe you're just reviewing something you already knew, but you're getting something from that collectible. Also, math books are really niche. No one really collects math books. I mean, maybe some of you do. Um, I collect weird things. And I think math books, I mean, they're just, they're just so great. They're so inexpensive. You can get old books so inexpensively. It's just like, a, to me, it's a no brainer. It's like, it's amazing. It's amazing. There's a lot of expensive math books out there. Um, the books by Courant, by Apostle, those are pretty pricey. Apostle Calculus is a pricey one. That one took me some years to get because I think I paid like $50 for it or something. That's, remember, I'm a low dollar collector. <laughs> so, budget level collecting. So I think that if you're the kind of person that is a collector, then yes, collect math books. Why not? If you like math, then obviously it's a no-brainer. You're probably already collecting. But let's just say you're like a person who's taking algebra and you're watching this channel because you're trying to learn math or you're trying to do better in your math class and maybe you're not even a math major. You're, you're going into like medicine or something else or, you're, or engineering. Should you collect math books? Maybe. I, I think yes. I think why not? You know, you never know what's going to happen in 10 years, what you'll be in life. Maybe in 10 years, you'll, you'll have your degree, you'll be married, you'll have kids, you'll be living somewhere else, and you'll have all these math books that you bought while you were in college, and you'll think about this video, and you'll say, hey, why did I buy those, those stupid books? But then, one day, 
you might pick up one of these books, right? You'll pick up a college algebra book like this one by Rosenbach, Whitman, Reserve. Really old school college algebra book. Fourth edition, this one. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. It smells so good. It's old books, new knowledge. And you'll learn some math, right? You'll reminisce. You'll romanticize your days of college and you'll, you'll, you'll learn something. I, I, think, I think it's worth it. I think someday you'll look back and you'll say, oh, I, I wish I would have learned more math. And you'll have those books as a resource. Another really cool thing I think about math books, this is, again, as a collector, so this might not be for you, is you know, people's names are in the books. So this person has, there's a person's name in here. I don't want to show the person. They're probably not alive anymore because this book was published in 1958 by Gin and Company. That's pretty old. So this person here, Gene Hodges, that's the person's name. Um, I'll cover their address. But yeah, Gene Hodges, I don't know if you can see that, uh, is probably no longer around or... You know, who knows where they are? Sometimes I internet stalk them. I had a book uh, on topology and it had the guy's name in there and I, and, I, and I searched for his name and I found out he worked for the Department of Defense. This was many years ago and I felt bad. I'm like, oh, I have his topology book. So I sent him an email, but, but he never replied. I guess he didn't care. You know, he's probably like, oh, you know. So yeah, should you collect? I say yes, because they're cheap. Um, try to get books cheaply. Uh, Another cool thing about collecting is that you can get books on topics that aren't even taught anymore. Here's one on plane and spherical trigonometry. That's not even taught anymore. They don't even teach spherical trigonometry in schools anymore. Oh, this one has a really peculiar smell. Mmm. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, oh it's probably not good. To, I'm, not, I'm not recommending you smell your books. Smell them. Uh, at, your, at, at your own risk. <laughs> so, oh, wow, wow, wow. And then something you should know, by the way, if you do, if you do decide to collect math books, this is useful advice. Um, you see this here? This is called a dust jacket, okay? So this makes the book more valuable. And then this here on the inside uh, is an examination copy. So this means that this book was sent to a teacher. Let me zoom in so you can see that. See that? So this is the old school way of doing it. Today, they call these instructor's editions. So back in the day, they called them examination copies. So this is a copy that was given to a teacher. So I bought this um, at a physical bookstore. I went to visit uh, a bookstore in Portland, Oregon a while back. It's been, uh, I think it's been over a month now. And uh, it's called Powell's Books. They actually, uh, I, was, I was filming in the store and they, they're like, oh, you can't film in here, sir. And I have that on video. I was like, ah, oh, I feel like one of those like prank channels. You know, they go into places and they film when they're not supposed to. I felt kind of bad. So I definitely, I was like, oh, sorry. And I left. I didn't keep filming. But um, they don't want you filming people in the store and stuff. So people are employees. But I did get some footage of the store. And I got this at the store. Great price. So books like this are, are valuable, right? The dust jacket makes it worth more money. An examination copy is more rare. Um, a lot of times books that belong to famous people are pretty cool. I have a, a bunch of books that belong to a man named uh, Augustus Prince. He was the first black radar man in the U.S. Navy. He was a nuclear physicist. And I have a bunch of his books from his personal collection. Um, and I have books uh, written by semi-famous mathematicians. You know, they're on Wikipedia. You know, they have their own Wikipedia page. So I always think that's cool. You know, if someone has a Wikipedia page, that's, you know, but I guess anyone can make a Wikipedia. I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I, I don't know much about Wikipedia. I just know it's really good for mathematics. I, I, it's a good website. So yeah. Anyways, collecting math books. Yes, I think you should. Uh, if you have the money, uh, if you have the resources, a lot of it depends where you live. I don't know how it is in other countries. Uh, in the U.S., it's very easy to get old math books, but I know in other countries, like I know like uh, in Spain, for example, uh, there's a lot of really cool math books in Spanish that are very hard to get in the U.S. here. Or in England, a lot of those old British math books from Europe, if you're in Europe, you have access to a lot of books that people in the United States don't have access to. So depending where you are, you'll have access to certain books because of shipping costs, right? So shipping is a thing, right? I mean, it costs money to ship stuff. And it can get kind of expensive. Books can get heavy. And, you know, when you're looking at a book that's like $10 and the shipping is 18 it's like, ah, oh, should I buy the book? 
$28 for a book. That happens a lot uh, with the books I buy. You know, I'm a budget level shopper, so I'll find some book uh, shipped from England. It's like $10, but the shipping is 18. So it's like, should I buy it? So yeah, collecting is worth it. I think that uh, you have lots of books that you can you know, look at. Also learning, you can learn from your books, like I said. And yeah, I, I just think it's worth collecting. If you're a math major, by the way, then I think it's a no-brainer, right? Because it's good to have more than one book. That was my initial reason for collecting, was because I wanted to have more than one resource. You know, I, if I didn't understand something in one book, um, I would look at another book, and I would try to learn from that book. I have like 30 abstract algebra books. It's ridiculous. So yeah, gives you more than one resource. That's another reason to do it. But again, for me, I've always been a collector. So that's probably not the reason you would collect. But if you are a collector, if you want to become one, try it. Um, it's kind of cool. Here's an old copy. Just one more before I end this video of a really cool book. Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces. This is an older edition. Oh, it has the person's name on there, on the on the thing, and it has a little book plate. Oh, nice. This is by Paul Halmos. This is the second edition. I bought this one probably because I couldn't afford the first edition. It was probably like out of my price range. So yeah, you could, you could be a budget level shopper like me and get old books. You can also find a lot of old books at uh, thrift shops uh, or estate sales. That's where I got all those uh, books uh, by famous people. Sometimes I get those from estate sales. So if you can go to bookstores or thrift shops, things like that, you can find a lot of old books that way. So it's kind of fun. Anyways, I'll end this video now. If you want to learn mathematics, by the way, I do have courses. Uh, check out my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. But just go to mathsorcerer.com. They're on the Udemy site, but please use my website uh, because the prices are lower, I'm pretty sure. Just click the links on my website and it'll take you to Udemy and you can get courses on everything. You can learn all kinds of math, algebra, calculus, trig, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, all that stuff. So yeah, anyways, keep doing math. And yeah, I say yes, collect. Oh, do you collect? Let me know. How long have you been collecting? Why do you collect? What are some reasons you think that people should collect math books? Until next time, keep doing math.